this video, I'll talk about suicide and the role of impulsivity, which has been a rather contentious topic in the fields of suicide prevention and suicidology, which is the study of suicide. This is Speak the Unspeakable, a series focused on suicide prevention through the lens of lived experience. My name is Scott Tishmer. I'm a suicide preventionist and a suicide attempt survivor. So I'll start with some of the evidence for how impulsivity plays a role in suicidal behavior. Take, for instance, a 2001 study where survivors of near lethal suicide attempts were asked how much time passed between the time you decided to commit suicide and when you actually attempted suicide. Quick disclaimer, while we no longer use the phrase commit suicide, as it suggests a connotation of criminality, that is how the question was worded in this study. But moving on, when asked how much time had passed between making that decision and acting, nearly 75% of attempt survivors said less than an hour. Almost half of attempt survivors said less than 20 minutes, and nearly a quarter of the attempt survivors said less than five minutes. Less than five minutes. That's all the time that had passed before making a near lethal attempt. Now for the purposes of this particular study, only those attempts in the less than five minute category were labeled as impulsive. Other studies using different scales of impulsivity have put that number upwards of 80%. Despite such evidence, there's been a great deal of debate around the role of impulsivity and suicide. But this lack of consensus has less to do with conflicting data and more to do with the differences in how we measure, define, and even conceptualize impulsivity. Now, impulsivity can be viewed as a multi-dimensional concept, typically including characteristics such as lack of inhibition and high urgency, prioritization of short-term over long-term goals, low premeditation and or poor planning, low perseverance and premature response, and high risk-taking and or sensation-seeking behavior. Impulsivity might also be viewed in terms of the decision-making process that leads to a specific behavior. So while some studies have treated impulsivity more in terms of a person's long-term personality traits, other studies have looked at impulsivity in terms of short-term, time-limited, situation-dependent states. It is in this latter context of the time-limited, situation-dependent states of impulsiveness that relates the most to my own experiences. While I had experienced thoughts of suicide on and off in the decade leading up to my attempt, and while I had also made suicide plans prior to that attempt with intent to act on them, which thankfully I never followed through on, my actual suicide attempt was completely unplanned. I would describe it as spur of the moment and as improvised, with very little if any deliberation. But once that decision was made, I was basically in action mode. I wasn't really thinking or feeling. It was like I was an autopilot, almost driven by a machine. Now some might hear this and see how it clearly fits within their construct of impulsivity. Others, however, might question, how can you define your attempt as impulsive when you had been thinking about suicide on and off for an entire decade leading up to your attempt? For some in the field of suicide prevention, there has been hesitancy to acknowledge the role of impulsivity in suicide at all for fear that it may reinforce the myth that suicide happens out of the blue with no warning signs, which we know is overwhelmingly not the case. Research has indicated that 80 to 90% of individuals who have died by suicide showed warning signs. One of the most important aspects of suicide prevention that does take into account the role of impulsivity in suicide is that of lethal means safety. Lethal means safety involves increasing the amount of time and distance between a person and the lethal means with which that person might attempt suicide. And it saves lives. Which is why lethal means safety and lethal means restriction is such an important aspect of crisis safety planning. I will do a more in-depth video on lethal means safety in a future video, but if you want to learn more now, check out the Means Matter campaign from Harvard's Injury Control Research Center. Also, if you haven't watched it yet, please check out my video entitled, Can I Prevent My Own Suicide? Where I go over steps of how to make a crisis safety plan, including examples from my own experience. So with that said, I wanna thank you so much for watching this video.
I've said it before and I'll say it again. There is strength in numbers. We may all at one time or another go through life experiences that can seem insurmountable, that can lead to feelings of hopelessness. This is why it's so important that we show up for one another. This is why it's so important that we hold hope for one another. If I know that down the road I might go through periods where I might not be able to see a future for myself, where I feel like giving up, I'm going to need your perspective. I'm going to need your hope that says, Scott, you'll get through this. We'll get through this together. And with that in mind, there's one thing I want you to consider. Looking at me, listening to me speak to you right now, do you think you can hold hope for me? And if you, like me, have also experienced thoughts of suicide, I have one more thing for you to consider. If you are able to look at me, to listen to me, and hold hope for me, I want you to take a minute to picture your future self. Picture yourself one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years from now. Now imagine holding space for that person, seeing and listening to that person, to that version of you. Treat that person with the same kindness and compassion that you would grant me. Because that person belongs here, you belong here, and you deserve every ounce of support that it might take to get you through those toughest times. I'm so glad that you're here, and we will get through this together. If you like this video, comment, click subscribe, and give a like below. Take a deep breath, now let it out, roll your shoulders back, and hold your head up high.